In this video, uh, I'm going to go over how to grind a block square. So it could be a one, two, three block. Um, basically, it could be any block where you have two edges that have to be perpendicular to each other. You would use this process. So when we start off, uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a reference face to grind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, in this case, I'm going to choose my largest face and I'm just going to clean that up with the grinder. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that face and we're going to put it against an angle plate and that's how we're going to get our sides square. So, uh, first things first, when grinding this, when cleaning this up, wheel selection is very important. Uh, for this particular part, I am not grinding a hardened block. This is mild steel, it's not hardened. So, uh, given that, that means I want to use a harder wheel. Doesn't need to break down as much, I don't need friability because the material is a little bit softer. So the grains are not going to get dull as quick, they don't need to break down and expose new sharp grains. Uh, also, this is a softer steel. I am also rough grinding this. So I'm going to choose a coarser grit. So this wheel here that I have, this is a 46. So this is a 46 grit wheel. This is an excellent grit for roughing. Uh, also, one of the other things, this is an aluminum oxide wheel. And we have a fairly open structure on this. And uh, looks like it is, yeah, well, I know it's a vitrified bond. So, uh, this is the wheel that I've chosen. Now, if I wanted to finish this and I wanted to get a really, really nice finish, I may rough this and then I might put a finishing wheel in and finish it. Something with a higher grit, um, perhaps maybe like an 80, uh, somewhere around there. But this 46 is perfect for roughing. So, before I put this on, one of the things that I want to do is I want to ring test this. So, I'm just going to hit this very lightly with something that's plastic or wood. Generally, you don't want to use metal because you could risk cracking the wheel. And you may not be able to hear that in the video, but we have a nice ring. That ring is what you're looking for. If you hear a blunt, something like that, toss the wheel out. That means there's some kind of crack in it. Good chance it could explode when you put it in the grinder. So before I put this on, uh, I want to mention one thing. Uh, these pieces of cardboard, these are called blotters. Uh, these blotters are absolutely necessary. Never put a wheel on without a blotter. So for example, I have a wheel here. This wheel is missing its blotter. Uh, there are extra blotters laying around the shop or around the grinding room. Make sure you grab one of these and put it on. This does uh, a very important task. So that blotter basically prevents this metal nut from contacting the grinding wheel. Uh, if you think about what a grinding wheel might look like, it has very high points. So there's high points on this and there's low points. If there's, there's no give to this. So if you smash this against those high points, there's a good chance you could crack this wheel when you're tightening it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a blotter on there and that blotter, that cardboard kind of uh, cushions, cushions that so that you don't crack the wheel. All right, to put this on, uh, I am going to put the recess out towards me, and that is just because my nut fits into this recess, but the back side of this barber does not fit into the recess. So, you gotta be careful with that. This is a left-handed nut, so it is lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. Go ahead and tighten this up. My 
expand. And you don't have to crank these down. You can tighten them up, just get them good and snug with your hands. You don't have to put wrenches on here or anything like that. They are designed so that they will tighten themselves. Uh, they do need to be tight, you can't have them loose, but you don't want to over tighten them. Close the door. Okay, now the next step. I am going to clean off my chuck, my magnetic chuck. You'll notice that I used a rag. That is fine to get the bulk of the stuff off. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a stone, a honing stone, and I'm going to stone this lightly, very lightly, just to take any high spots off that might be on there. I'm also going to weight my stone off before I put it on there. So I'm not putting any pressure on the stone, just rubbing it over, just to take any high spots off. Now I'm going to use my hands to clean this. I want to be able to feel any dirt on here, or any high spots. And as of right now I don't, so I'm satisfied that that is clean. You always want to use your hand. Don't just use a rag. The rag will deposit lint and things like that. Uh, they can make you out of tolerance when you're working in tents. Uh, next, I'm going to put my part on there, but first I'm going to stone all the high spots off my part just to make sure that my part isn't rocking when I put it on there. So there's no high spots on it. I'm going to wave that with my hand as well. The side that I stone is going to go down. Now, if I were making two blocks, I would put them both on here at the same time, and I would grind both at the same time. Since I'm only making one, obviously I only need to put one on. Okay, to turn on our magnetic chuck, you're just going to flip the lever. Always check to make sure your part is secure. This part is nice and firmly held onto the chuck. Okay, next. I am going to turn on my spindle. One of the things you should always do is make sure you're behind. You never want, it's kind of hard to turn some of these on from behind the spindle, but uh, you always want to be in front of the wheel because it's spinning this way. So if it does break, it's going to throw everything that way, not into your face if you're bent over and you're behind it. So, you always want to keep that in mind. Alright, so one of the other things you want to do is you want to make sure that your grinder sounds good. In other words, it shouldn't sound like it's humming. It should just sound like a smooth, uh, kind of like a smooth hiss. If it's humming, if it's making a, 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 a very uh, high vibration, then what you need to do is probably balance your wheel. Uh, and you can check out my wheel balancing video to learn how to do that. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to touch off. I'm going to come over just the corner of this part and crank my table up. Until I'm close. And I'm going to slowly go back and forth traversing right over just a little bit of the corner. I don't want to have the whole wheel over top of the part because when I hit, I'm going to hit that whole wheel and it's going to, it's going to potentially burn it. Uh, now, uh, what I want to do is, before I touch off though, I need to make sure that I dress this wheel. So I'm going to put the dresser on here. You 
always, always, always want to dress your wheel before you do any grinding. Uh, it does a couple of things. It exposes new grains so that you have sharp grains and also trues the wheel. Make sure it's spinning perfectly concentric with the spindle. Otherwise, you'll get what's called skipping. I'm going to bring this in. Now, when I dress the wheel, I always make sure I'm a little bit behind center of the wheel. That way, it can't catch and pull the dresser through the wheel. So I'm a little bit behind center. And I'm just going to bring the wheel down into the dresser. And I'm listening. I'm listening for when it hits. I can't see when it hits. The other thing I can do is I can pull my hand back here and I can feel grit. I don't like to do that. I can usually just hear it. Uh, if something were to happen and it were to break and throw chunks, probably going to cut my hand up pretty bad. So I just listen for this. When I'm dressing this, basically what I'm doing is I'm listening to make sure that it sounds like it's taking a consistent pass all the way across. That way I know I'm not just taking the high spots off. I want it to be cutting all the way around that wheel. I'm going to take one more pass. And I'm going to bring this out and take my dresser off. Um, another thing, the speed at which you traverse the dresser across the wheel does make a difference. If you go really slow, you're going to end up with a nice smooth or a smoother surface on the outside of that wheel. That can help cause burning. If you traverse that across faster, it's almost going to cut a thread in that wheel. Obviously, it's not a real thread, but it's going to leave high and low spots. It's going to be a helix across the surface of the edge of that wheel. That's going to uh, basically give you less contact with the part, which is a good thing because it prevents burning. The less contact, less surface contact you have, the less heat you generate. Now, you'll notice another thing. Every time I'm taking something off, I'm always bringing the table behind the wheel. That's so uh, I don't have to worry about my hand coming across the wheel or coming in contact. If I'm out here and it starts to move, I can have my hand get pinched between the wheel, and that would not be a good situation. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back out, and I'm just going to weight this off. Again, use my hands, and I'm weighting my hand on my pants in between each time I weight this, just to try and get any dirt that might be build up on my hand off. Alright, so I'm satisfied that that's clean. Uh, I'm going to put the side that I stoned down on the chuck again. And I'm going to flip the chuck switch and turn the chuck on. Alright, next I'm going to bring the wheel down and I'm going to touch off my part. As I was going to do before, of course, I realized I forgot to dress the wheel. Alright, so I'm going down, just looking straight on and looking when it gets close. I'm pretty close right now. Again, I'm only over the tip of my part. So I'm just going to traverse back and forth. Just double check, make sure that's tight. And I'm going to hit a few foul now. When I'm doing this, I'm looking for sparks and I'm listening. So when you get good at this, you'll be able to touch off and you'll be able to hear it before you see sparks. Uh, right there, I already hit. You heard nothing, but you probably didn't see any sparks, but I did actually touch. So now that I've touched, I'm going to come across this. 
And the reason I'm going to come across, even though I just touched, I'm not going to try and take any more. I don't know how uneven that surface is. If I'm, for instance, at a low spot on that, I don't want to start going to pro, or I don't want to take a, a 2,000 steps of cut, and then by the time I get to this side, I'm taking 5,000 steps of cut. So as soon as I touch, that's when I'm going to uh, go ahead and come across the part. Now, if you don't think your part is very square at all, then you should measure it before you put it on here and mark the high spot and touch off the high spot. finish result. So um, what I did there, the surface finish is pretty good. It's, uh, I could be better if uh, I used a finer grit wheel to do a finish pass, but this is uh, completely adequate and it will uh, go, it will be in spec. So uh, what I did here, the process, I went about a thou each time to rough it in uh, until I was within the dimension that I needed from the holes and then I took about a five-tenths pass and then a two-tenths finish pass. All right, so once you have finished grinding one side, you're gonna release the magnet, take your part off, and one of the things you're gonna do is you're gonna stone this part. I'm gonna stone all of the edges for the side that I ground. I wanna make sure that there's no burr sticking up around the outside of this. And I'll show you why when we get over the inspection room. So when you stone this, you wanna make sure that you're stoning it basically away from the side you just ground and knock those burrs off, like so. Also, you'll notice that I am doing this in the grinding lab. You do not wanna use this in the inspection lab. Basically all you're doing is knocking some grind or some stone grid off and you're basically creating dirt in the inspection lab. So you don't want to do that. Do that while you're in the grinding lab or at least outside of the inspection lab. Okay, uh, we are now in the inspection lab. So the next step in grinding this block square is to grind two of the other edges square or faces square to the face that we just ground. So to do that, uh, we have to enlist the help of an angle plate. Now this is a precision angle plate. So this angle plate is not a piece of cast iron, it's not a layout angle plate. This is a precision angle plate. It is guaranteed square within, I believe this one is two ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, so these are obviously precision instruments. Uh, what you want to do, first thing is you need to make sure this thing's clean. Second thing, uh, what you need to ask yourself is, do I trust that this thing is squared within two tenths? Well, if you were keeping it in your box and you know how it was treated all the time, then maybe you can trust it. Uh, this particular plate is the school's plate. Uh, it's been used by dozens of students. So I'm going to check this and just make sure that it is actually square. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure the bottom of this is absolutely clean because if there's any dirt on here, uh, it will actually make a difference. And I'm going to demonstrate that here after I check to see if it's square. Wake off my table and I'm going to slide this on to the surface plate. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my square wall. And I'm just going to raise this so that I'm checking to the very top of this angle plate. Alright, and then I'm going to go set it against my master square. Now this master square is guaranteed within, you know, basically less than a tenth of squareness. Uh, so this we know we can trust. The best way to check this to make sure it's not out. And mine is indicators a little deep there. Okay. The best way to check this to make sure that it's out or not out is to zero it out on one side and check another side. Check basically four quadrants around it. And they should be consistent. And I'm reading zero on three sides, so that should be fine. I'm going to check the fourth here, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be consistent as well. Yeah, so we're in good shape there. Just adjust this a little bit because I bumped it. All right, so we're reading zero. Uh, now I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to check my angle plate. See how close my angle plate is. All right, so my angle plate is basically within about a half a tenth. One half a tenth. Uh, I'm going to bring it in to show you that. So here I'm going to check my angle plate and I'm going to run this square all in against the edge and check to see how square we actually are. All right, so you can see right there we're about within a tenth. So this is squared or within about a ten thousandth of an inch. So that gives us pretty good accuracy. So I've checked to make sure that this face is square to the bottom face, but I also need to make sure that this face is square to the bottom face because I'm going to be sitting on this when I grind the other side. So I'm just going to double check this one as well. And that one is actually within a half a tenth. Half a tenth. All right. Now, depending on where I'm mounting my part, if I'm mounting it on the outside, I'm fine. I know that this face is square to the bottom face. Okay, so since I'm going to mount to the inside of this, I am actually going to check to make sure that this face is parallel to the face against the granite surface plate. So I'm just going to run an indicator over it just to make sure. And so far, so good. Now I'm checking all around this part. Yeah, so I'm seeing only a variation of about, about a half a tenth throughout that whole surface. So, worst case scenario, we can say that if we mount our one, two, three block to this space, our maximum error will only be about a, about a tenth and a half. Um, we had about a tenth out of squareness from this space to this space, and we're out about a half a tenth of parallelism from this space to this space. It could be better than that. It could actually be compensating for the error that we have over here, but if it is uh, adding to the error, if it's cumulative, then worst case scenario, we're out a tenth and a half. That's fine. The best we need to grind to here, we're calling out a half a fat. So uh, we have plenty of space there, and we can still achieve that tolerance. Okay, so next, after checking my angle plates, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the part to this. So, you may ask, why didn't I grind both sides parallel first? Uh, the reason for that, usually I grind this opposite side last. Uh, when I mount this piece against the angle plate, 
I'm going to use clamps, and those clamps would mar our surface finish. So I wait till last to grind that surface, just so the uh, clamps don't mess it up. Okay, so what I want is I want this part to stick up past the top of the angle plate just a little bit, enough to grind, and I also want it to stick out past this face of the angle plate so that I have enough to grind. Uh, depending on what side I grind first is how I'm going to melt my clamps. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look and I'm going to grab some parallels to set this thing. So let's put a parallel on here, and that looks good. I'm sticking up about an eighth inch past the top of my angle plate, and all I have to do is slide it over about an eighth inch past there. Uh, this surface does not have to be indicated perfect. I'm just using a parallel, not worried about indicating. None of these surfaces are ground yet. So this is going to set the standard, and this is going to set the standard, and then I'll use those faces that I've just ground to locate off of. Okay, so I'm going to add clamps. Now I'm keeping in mind where I add my clamps, that I'm going to also have to remove these clamps, or actually move the clamps to a different spot when I go to grind the other face. Okay, so I'm all clamped up now. Uh, I have three clamps. I basically want three clamps uh, clamping this part. And that goes for any part. That's not always possible. Uh, you want to try and get three clamps on there. Sometimes you can't get three. So, uh, you, you know, obviously you have to kind of work around that sometimes. But ideally, we want three clamps on there. Uh, one thing I did not mention earlier is that these clamps, I made sure these were really clean before I brought them in here and started using them over top of this granite surface plate. Uh, I actually blew them out in our, uh, our blasting cabinet that we used to blow out parts just to make sure there was no grinding grit in these. Uh, generally, if you do not need to be in the inspection room to clamp these, then you should not have these clamps in here. Another thing, these clamps should never be laying on the inspection sheet, or the inspection uh, table, or the granite surface plate. They shouldn't be laying there. They should be on a different table uh, to make sure that you're not depositing a bunch of grinding grit, because these things collect grinding grit. Uh, so, if I were filming, the, if I wasn't filming this, I would have actually done this in the grinding room on a shop surface plate that we have, which would have been perfectly fine for this. There are times when you need to bring these in here, and you need to clamp in here uh, if you're using a sign bar and gauge blocks. We really don't want the gauge blocks to leave this room, so you would bring them in here. But you've got to make sure it's clean after you leave it, and make sure your uh, clamps are clean before you bring them in here and use them. Another thing I'm going to make sure of, I'm just going to take a parallel and just kind of check to make sure my clamps are below. My wheel's not going to hit any of the clamps, so I'm sit at least an eighth inch below. I'm not going to take off anywhere near that much. Okay, so my part's clamped up. Let's head over to the grinder. Let's take a cut on this, and then we'll flip it up on a second. All right, uh, we're over at the grinder now. We have our part all clamped up. Uh, I'm just going to make sure, by the way, I never turned off my grinding wheel or my grinder. Uh, it's still grinding, it's still moving, still spinning. Uh, if you turn this off, you're going to want to redress your wheel. So if you leave it on, you don't have any problems. Obviously, if you're at the end of the day, you have to turn your grinder off. Uh, then you need to dress your wheel the next day when you come in. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make sure my surface is absolutely clean again. Remember, Cleanliness is the most important part. I think we demonstrated that when we looked at how much grinding grit can uh, knock out a uh, angle plate. So, I'm making sure that's clean. I'm also gonna make sure the back of my angle plate is clean. And I'm gonna slide this on there. Always slide it on. Now, uh, I don't have my wheel up high enough, so I'm gonna raise my wheel. It's still down where it was from when I ground the first side.
pass on this side. I've got it all cleaned up. Um, I'm with intolerance here between my hole center and the side of my parts. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have already lowered or raised this up about two tenths for my finish pass. I took a five tenths pass previous to this. Um, so what I'm going to just demo this and I'm just going to come across a little bit of time. And I'm taking about quarter turns on my dial here, on my z-axis. And you notice I'm not getting many sparks, that's a good sign. <laughs> that means I'm actually taking what I think I'm taking. And I'm just going to come across here very, very lightly. Now when I get across to the other side, uh, I'm actually going to come back across again. And what I'm going to do, it's, it's what we call sparking out. I'm going to make sure that this sparks out. Basically, all sparks stop occurring. So I'm coming back across again. And I can see I'm getting one or two, but for the most part, uh, this is pretty much sparked out. And I'm still getting sparks a little bit. So what I might do is come back across even again, just to make sure that this surface is completely flat. Come back again, and I'm taking longer step overs this time. And now I'm not getting even as much as I was the last time. So I'd say we're pretty well sparked out. There was a few there, but um, not anything of major concern. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this part off and I'm actually going to wind my Y forward so that my clamp doesn't interfere with that wheel there. And once I take this off, I am going to stone all these faces while I'm still here in the grinding room to prevent grinding grit from getting in the uh, inspection lab. Uh, and then we're going to flip these clamps around. All right, so now I'm going to flip these clamps around so that I can grind this face. Uh, the idea here is that I want to keep two clamps clamped on this at all times, at least two. Uh, like again, again, like I said, that's not always possible, but in this circumstance it is possible. So I'm going to make that happen. So I'm going to move this clamp to here where I have space. I'm 
going to flip this around actually. There we go. Clamp that nice and tight. All right, so now that I have two over here, I'm going to remove this one. If I remove this one, then I have two clamps on one side, and this port's going to want to go like that. So I want to take the next clamp off where there's two. So I'm going to take this one off of here, and I'm actually going to flip this one so that I can turn my, uh, my clamp. Tighten that. I'm actually going to angle this one a little bit. Change the angle. Okay, and then I'm going to change this one. Notice that I'm doing these one at a time, so I still have that contact, that two in contact. Okay, now I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to place that one right about there. And I have three clamps clamping this thing on. Okay, so now that I have three clamps clamping this on, we're going to take it back over to the grinder. Uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to double check this face with an indicator just to make sure it didn't move. All right, so we're in the inspection lab now, and what I'm doing is I'm just double checking that face that I just ground to make sure that I get a zero reading on my indicator. Make sure it is absolutely parallel. It should be. If it is not, then this part moved while I was reclamping. So this is not a necessary step. If you're pretty confident that you reclamped okay, then you should be fine. But if you're having problems and you just can't get these two edges square, this should be done in between, just to make sure it didn't move. That will rule that out as your problem. So through this video, I'm gonna talk about the, the problems that you can run into and the errors that you might be uh, having that are causing this not to be square. All right, so I am zeroed out on here, and this looks good on this side. I'm gonna spin this around and come to the other side and check the other side. So, it looks like it's out about two tenths, uh, maybe a tenth, a tenth. Let me just, let me just readjust this and try again here because I had an indicator buried pretty heavy there. So let me recheck that. All right, so we're reading about zero there. All right, let's go and check the other side. Okay, so I'm, I'm reading about one tenth out. Let's do this this way. Yeah, so I'm still reading about one tenth out. It's about one tenth, I can live with that. That should be okay. Uh, ideally, I would like it to be perfect, but it has moved just a hair. Uh, let's see what our other side brings. Okay, so now that we have checked our parts, uh, we know we're only out by about a tenth on that. Uh, like I said, I can live with that because our tolerance is plus or minus five tenths. So, we're now going to sit this part down like this on our chuck, and I'm going to grind this face here. And I'm going to bring this in as far as I can without clamps hitting anything. Uh, I may have to orient this a little bit differently just to get these clamps situated so they're not hitting anything. That looks pretty good there. Okay, I check my, my voice. All right. Now I'm going to come in and again, I'm going to touch off.
Okay, right there I've touched off. All right, uh, I'm going to now grind across here. You can see that most likely the heavy side is probably the opposite corner or the high side. So I'm not taking uh, large increments in my Z so that I don't end up with a huge cut and I don't want any burning. Continue to take this down until my hole is intolerant, center of hole to this face. Okay, our second or our third side is complete. It is ground. Um, why am I in the inspection lab with an indicator on this? Well, I'm just double checking this. So last time we realized that there was a bit of a deviation across the surface. So there's really two things that are going to make that, or three things. So one of them would be reclamping. It could have moved while I was reclamping. Uh, we can't rule that out until now. So we couldn't rule it out for the last one because I had already reclamped. Uh, it could be dirt underneath the part. I'm pretty sure I had it clean, but I can never rule that one out completely. Uh, and then the other one is that our chuck has a dish in it, uh, just from parts wearing on it constantly. Could have a little bit of a dish. Uh, in that case, you would have to regrind your magnetic chuck. To figure out if that's the case, what you would do is mount an in indicator to the base of the machine and run it across that magnetic chuck. So you're gonna run it across there, and you want to do it in a couple different Z levels just to make sure the whole thing's flat. If you find that it is out a bit, um, especially if it's out significantly, you would have to regrind your chuck. So, uh, to rule out, I'm here to rule out whether the chuck has a dish in it or not. So I have not reclamped, I have not touched my clamps at all. I have simply weighed the bottom of my part, cleaned the surface plate, sat this on here, and now I'm going to indicate across here to see if it is absolutely flat. If it is not absolutely flat, then my chuck does have a bit of a dish in it. So, uh, I'm set at zero. As I come across here, I am seeing about about a half a tenth of deviation between the two. So I probably do have a little bit of dish in my magnetic chuck. Now, am I super concerned about half a tenth? No, not for this part. This part is plus or minus five tenths. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Of, or sorry, not plus or minus five tenths. It is a five tenths perpendicularity tolerance, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine with this. Uh, if I do run into problems, I know that that's one that I can clean up a little bit. So if I can't get this square, I can regrind the chuck and take that small amount of error out of there. Remember, every amount of error that you start with is error you're going to end up with in the end. So uh, right now, the possibilities for this causing this is either the dish in the chuck or I wasn't completely clean and there was a little bit of dust or dirt underneath my part. Uh, all I can do for the dirt is just wave it clean and make, do my best to make sure that it's absolutely clean. Uh, the other problem could potentially be maybe a burr on the plate, but I checked the plate, I made sure that there was no burrs, so I know that that's not the problem. So the problem is either a dirt or a dish for this one. Uh, part of grinding is really narrowing down where the error is coming from. If you start and you follow all these steps, you will minimize the chances of any of that error happening. So, with that said, I am going to unclamp this. And I'm actually going to unclamp this over on the table so that I don't deposit any possible grinding grit. Now, I did blow this out with air before I come in here every time, but uh, I don't want to take any chances. Okay, uh, I'm going to clamp my part. I've deburred all the edges, I've stoned them nice and good. Uh, after stoning the edges, a lot of times what I like to do is I either use a precision ground uh, honey stone 
or I'll use a super fine Arkansas stone to just kind of smooth it out, just to make sure there's no raised spots uh, on any of the faces. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that datum A down on the surface plate and check that squareness first. Obviously, if we don't have squareness between all three of these sides, there's no reason to continue grinding them in parallel. We have to start with these three being perpendicular before we go to worry about whether the other sides are parallel. Okay, so with that face down, I'm going to check both faces to it. So I'm going to adjust my height, or my, uh, yeah, height of my square all here. And I want to make sure this square all is testing it at the very top edge. I want to make sure, of course, the needle is actually hitting that face, but I want to be on the top. I don't want to check it halfway up. That's not going to do me a lot of good. So I'm going to re-zero my square all. And it looks like I'm not hitting there, so I'm going to need to adjust it a little bit. Okay, maybe zero. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so let's check this first side. And it looks good. I'm going to bring it in for a close-up. Okay, so looking close up, we're just going to double check our, our square. Make sure that we're at zero and we're perfect. All right, and then we're going to come in and we're going to check our part. So you can see there, we're out about a total of two tenths. So about two ten thousandths of an inch. So that is well within tolerance. Very happy with that. All right, next we're going to check our squareness on this side. It's going to check squareness here. And you can see there we are, oof, man, we're almost right on. We're about within about a half a tenth there. So, also, very happy with that. Okay, next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our part up. And, let me zoom out here a little bit. Uh, so, we're going to rotate it up, and I'm going to readjust my height gauge so that, again, I am working off the top of the part. And we're going to re-zero that. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna put my datum B. In this case, datum B is right here. This side face is my datum B. So I'm gonna put that down, and I'm gonna check to the side here. Hold on, I think I'm in a... I think I'm in a wrong, oh, I'm checking the wrong side. <laughs> I was checking the unground side, so here's the ground side. So hopefully that turns out a little better. Thought something was wrong there. Okay, so we're out about three tenths over that face. So let me zoom in and show you that. So if I check this, right there is the high spot. And that's about three tenths. All right, so now that we've confirmed that this side is square to this side, this side, this face is square to these two faces, we know that this, these are all square to each other. Now, what we can do is we can just lay those faces down and grind the opposite sides. Uh, that will ensure that these are parallel to each other and they're square to all square to each other. Uh, so all you need to do is sit these on the chuck, on the ground surfaces, and clean that up. And we're also going to take this to size as well. Uh, the nice part about this is, since you're just sitting it on the chuck, you can take it off, you can measure it, and you can slowly come down to your size. Uh, if you're doing two parallel blocks, or two, one, two, three blocks, you should, you absolutely 
absolutely should be doing them both at the same time. So you should have squared these three faces on both blocks, and then you should sit both of them on the chuck at the same time and grind them at the same time. What does that do? That, means, that ensures that they are both exactly the same size, that they are absolutely parallel. Uh, that is super important because when you use these later as parallel blocks and you're clamping something, you will ensure the part is parallel, not off parallel. Uh, so, uh, we're going to go in and we're going to finish this up by grinding the other size of this. Okay, so although I already finished ground this face, uh, it occurred to me that I would be remiss if I didn't point this out. Uh, the way I'm holding this part on the chuck, I have it so that my longest dimension is in line or parallel with the wheel. Uh, the reason for that, if I were to put it like this, what might happen? Well, if I take too deep of a cut, this thing could easily tip over. I don't have a lot of surface area that's keeping it from tipping this way. So if I put the longest dimension, it's highly unlikely that's going to be able to tip over that way. So that's why I set it on the surface plate, or sorry, the uh, magnetic chuck like that. Now, if you're using a small, or you have to grind a really small part, uh, there's a couple of options. You can put items on here to block it on either side so that it doesn't tip. So I could put blocks on either side that come up but just are slightly lower than what I'm, the surface that I'm grinding. And that would help hold it in place. The other option is if you're doing something really small and high, you can also clamp it to an angle plate. Uh, obviously, reclamping this to an angle plate introduces the possibility for error. So we try to avoid that if at all possible, but sometimes it's not possible to avoid just because of the size and thickness of the part. So just make sure that you're clamping your parts in an intelligent way, a way that it's going to prevent it from knocking the part over. Even if I was doing this part like this, I still wouldn't sit it like that because I don't want it to tip over. I'm going to sit it like this. All right, so uh, we're back in the inspection room and we're going to check this part to make sure that it is perpendicular. So as you can see, I marked here, you might be able to see that little mark. That is the side that I just ground perpendicular with my first face. So we have our indicator zeroed out and we're going to move this part underneath the indicator. See the needles jumping a little bit. Looks like right there, so far our max is about two ten thousandths of an inch. Back up to two tenths and back down to zero. I'm just going to run down the middle just to make sure that that's not out. That looks pretty good. That's staying consistently at zero. Okay, so we have two tenths out of parallelism on that face. Uh, now we are going to check our side face and there's my mark. I could barely see the mark on here. Must have wiped it off. Okay, so I'm going to bring indicator down and we're going to set that to zero. This is a half tenth indicator, so it's very very, very touchy. So right there, we're pretty much at zero. Okay, uh, let's bring that a little bit more into frame. Okay, it's zeroed out again. All right, so we're zeroed out, so we're gonna ride along this edge here and check this whole thing. And we're getting about maybe a half a tenth of deviation, if that. So that edge is extremely parallel to the other edge that we ground. Uh, now, last but not least, we are going to check the end. Move my indicator up a little bit. Of course, every time I'm cleaning the part off before I slide it back on the, or the uh, surface plate. Bring our indicator down. 
And we're going to zero this out again on this edge. Okay, so we zero it out. And it looks like we're getting about two, about two tenths deviation there. Oh, maybe three tenths. Maybe as much as three tenths deviation. So I would suspect that we definitely have a little bit of a dish in our magnetic chuck, but three tenths is just fine for what we're doing. Um, obviously our tolerance is a half a thou, so that would be just fine and it would be in tolerance. Okay, so <clears throat> Now that we've established that the part is in dimensionally, in terms of size, in terms of squareness, in terms of parallelism, so geometrically we have this part exactly where we want it, it's intolerance. Uh, the last thing we need to check is um, surface finish. So we need to check how many micro inches we have. And according to the print it's saying that we need to have a max of 32 micro inches. So uh, this gadget here, this is a profilometer and this is going to use this tiny little needle and it's going to drag it across the surface to check our surface finish. Now this, uh, this, act, this here, why do I have basically uh, normally I would mount this thing on a height gauge or something like that. I just don't have the stuff to easily mount it. So I have it sitting uh, parallel on top of the part and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Now what it's going to do is this needle is going to come down and it's going to drag across the surface finish. And you kind of see here we have a graph of how far out it is and this is kind of the peaks and valleys that it's feeling on this. Also, you notice that my angle or my block is angled a little bit. The reason for that is I always want to set my block uh, or I want to set my profilometer so that it reads perpendicular to how my surface finish is. So my grinding direction was basically like that. So I'm going perpendicular to that to make sure that I get the roughest possible reading. You can see there I got a 19.38. So 19.38 is well within spec uh, because I believe we have a 32 on the print. So we've now concluded that this part is absolutely correct. So we checked all the dimensions uh, including the surface finish and it is a good part. So that concludes this video on how to square a block um, in, the, in the grinder, with the grinder I should say, uh, and using an angle plate. So if you have any questions, obviously, as always, you can feel free to see me during class or, of course, during my office hours. Um, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the video.